guys welcome to the stream I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay we have been working on a fawn if you're interested to see how we got to this stage there are videos in my YouTube channel so just click through and have a look I um, want to show you where we got to let's move that stand out of the way here we are so hi lovely to have you so I've done the smoothing in of those arms and getting the hands looking right but I did very little actual um, anything different to it off stream you baked it. Other, and yes obviously I baked it um, yeah I hope everyone's had a good week this week Sorry I didn't stream last week. I was feeling rough, which is entirely normal for me. Um, yeah, so I'm back with it and I'm back doing this. I'm actually looking forward to doing these legs. Now, I dug through all my little plastic animals and I found my goat. So I got a rough idea of the way the hair lays on the goat leg. I think what we're going to do with this is three stages. Firstly, we're going to make and sh do the basic shape of the... No, firstly, we're going to do the hoof. Then we're going to do the basic shape out of um, just some of the brown that I mixed up. Then we're going to add some hair that I've made. So what I've done, I'm going to talk to you about how I made the hair. Big old tray now what you're doing with that is let's get a bit of brown to show you right um the pattern clay is just my swirly clay that i always use you can see it done in many videos right this is a lot bigger amount of clay obviously than i've done with these hairs but i think it'll be easier for you to see you're going to roll it out into a relatively short stick and make sure one end of it is pointed for the twists what you do is you take it you fold it so that it's got an angle and then you start to twist and you actually get those little spirals if you just start to twist without doing that angle I'll show you what happens let's roll that up bring it back to smooth so it's got no creases like that so if I was just to twist that stick see there's no real ridges forming it just swirls any design you've got so you need to fold it out and then start to twist and it will spiral okay now the other shape that I've got on there are little waves so I'll show you that again you're starting with your stick with the end pointed then I lay it against my finger and I use my thumb to put a right angle and then finger goes over to push against it to do a fold back back up like that and I try to put a lip on one end and a bit of a lip on the other and if it's longer you can get far more zigzags in it let's find one that I've done that's got a few Whoop. see what I mean and you can do them loose you can do them tight but, they're unbaked, aren't they? but all these are unbaked and the reason why they're unbaked is they will stick to the raw clay better. But you've got to be careful with how you place them that you don't mess them up. So I will show you that. So the reason why I'm starting with the hooves is because I don't want to not allot that space and end up with the leg clay going too far down. So what I've made up is it's mostly black but with a bit of silver so you end up with that very sort of gunmetal colour I think 
since we're working on a mythical animal, we can play around with some of the colours. But a normal goat hoof is usually a dark grey, but pretty matte. Now, have a look against your model and make sure that you're happy with the amount of clay you're going to use for the hoof. I think that's going to look right for us. Before you even begin to add it or shape it, make sure that you get the clay for the second hoof and compare the sizes against each other. You can also weigh it on a weighing scale. I'll see if my weighing scale goes down that low. I'll show you a trick I do because some of these weighing scales don't go down small enough for what you want. So that's the clay I want to use. And can you, oh, it does come up. So 1.5. If you've got a bit that's too small, add a bigger bit of clay take note of what that is so it's 11 then you can add tiny tiny bits so 0.5 take the 0.5 off and then add 0.5 out of the next bit and then you've got 2.5s and it's still registering on the weighing scale does that make sense right but this one it's done okay though sometimes it does take a couple of goes like that so 1.5 and we want this one 2.5 so a lot bigger so it is always worth getting a set of little weighing scales Oop. come on register it this is what I'm talking about sometimes they're not that sensitive I bet that's because that's no it should be the same 9.5 yeah, my scales are going crazy. Let's tear it and see if that works. I think you've got less than a gram and therefore it um, doesn't register. Yeah, no, my scales are going crazy. I'm going to eyeball it and work this out off stream. Five pound scales that are a couple of years old. Usually if I take the battery out and put it back in, it starts behaving itself again. Might need a new battery. Yeah, might need a new battery. Yep, they look fine. But have a proper look and make sure that your hooves are right. Now, <coughs> what I'm going to do is roll them out into like a little stick that's quite flat, but you don't want to take it so thin that um, you're finding it hard to work with. You just really need it to be the thick enough that you can wrap it around your wire. The bit that you've got to focus on is the height, making sure it's the height you want it to be and that they're both the same height as each other. You can do this by rolling it out on the board and then pinching it flat. I wouldn't bother with a rolling pin for anything this thin. But yeah, that'll do it. They look about the same height. Right. Now, rookie mistake is you start from the outside and the join ends up on the inside. And then you're fighting with the other leg to um, smooth out the join. So what I advise, we're going to do this leg first. Face it so that the inside of the leg is towards you. Put the clay in that gap. Sorry, like the arm's in the way. So clay in the gap and then wrap it around. So the join is on the outside. So it's far more easier to smooth. The front is fine. The outside is fine. It's just on that inside that you don't want it because it is going to be really, really annoying. Now, what I'm doing is I'm pushing any air out, making sure that it's stuck firmly to the base and to the middle of the 
leg armature before I start to smooth it in and I can see that there's a bit of a gap at the top there so it's not even to just push it down with your thumb now you can use a tool or you can just get in there with your finger I'm just going to smooth the underside with a tool there just to start to shape it a little bit like so but majority of the shaping I'm doing by pinching okay right so first tooth in like that okay now as I always say doing the second is far harder than doing the first because not only have you got to complete the process you've also got to replicate the first one so that it looks symmetrical so I'm doing the same thing I will put it on its side and show you but I'm just wrapping it round first so that's it wrapped around so the join line is now on the outside there then you're going to put it down and use your fingers to squeeze all the air out of that join so that it's firmly secured to that leg metal and looking like the same shape as the other one smooth out the join line I'm going to use my fingers for the majority then come in for just that bit underneath which really is hard to get your finger into but you can use something like a pin to actually get down there if you want I'm just gonna neaten it up and then I'll show you what I've done there we go right you guys will be happy to know that for Christmas I am getting money together so that I can get some better lights so when we stream <coughs> it's not so dark I actually at the moment have two lights coming in diagonally and the main room light and it still looks dark right that's all I need that silver for so what I'm going to do is put that away the last thing I want is that mixing in with any of my brown and making it look odd so quick finger clean with a bit of kitchen roll and now we're gonna start to work on the legs so I'm getting some brown clay um, it's got a bit of a swirly design but we're not gonna see this underside very much you can use your scrap but you may find there are gaps that you see through the hairs we're going to add so you don't want it to be wildly different to your hair colour or you will not get away with it I warn you right so again they're not even we are cutting two balls that are roughly the same amount of clay we're doing this because we want the legs to look the same so you don't want to go two way out there with the clay difference on either side right I always find it easier to work with clay in a ball and it's also easier to see whether they're the same size as each other that way um, I think FIMO does do a plastic guide with different sized round holes so you can use it as a guide measure are you getting continuous lights with soft boxes that's what I use love them haven't looked into it yet we haven't looked into it we've got to do a whole lot of googling any suggestions, any suggestions will always be helpful because the thing is <clears throat> I'm learning a lot about clay and I'm learning a lot about selling and advertising and lighting and photography and there is so much more to doing a clay business than doing clay and I 
going as quick as I can at learning everything but I'm absolutely aware there's a lot of stuff that I still need to learn the back of this keeps trying to lean backwards I think I really need to in the future work on a better armature for it but what I'm hoping I'm going to take that bit of clay off because it's cracking that the legs are going to hold it in the position that I want now I reckon there's a lot of clay going on there that might actually be too much for that leg <coughs> now if you're not sure and you're worried once you've got the two even amounts that you're going to end up needing to add more clay that's fine whenever you take a bit of extra clay to add you just make sure you measure out that same amount of clay again to add to the pile for the other leg so you don't need to know your end clay amount <coughs> now i'm going to take this ball a lot flatter i don't want it too flat because i do want to come in and do his backside probably about that thin so i can get it around the wire and again don't do it on the in the inside your join seam either front back or outside of the leg um i'm aware that i've got a steep zigzag in there to do and i know this clay is going to fold over that zigzag and i'll show you how i deal with that but the bit i'm worrying and trying to do first of all is make sure I push that raw clay very securely onto the underside of the baked clay as I wrap round and make sure that I tuck the clay in so that there are no air bubbles being trapped. We can sort out clay distribution down the leg after I've got it securely and firmly attached in and often you're going to need to take it, turn it upside down really push the clay into the leg itself because we got the arm <clears throat> up and on the hip we're going to need a tool to get in there and with that i just get my big cup of tools out these are some of my favorite tools and i never really know what would be the best thing until i just get in there and have a go if it fits and does what I want it to, <clears throat> then I carry on. If it doesn't, I'll try a new tool. I'm using this metal set, the one with the tiny little spatula at the end, just to come in down there between that arm and push the clay onto that hip, like that. And you don't have to worry about being too neat with this because it is going to get all hidden up with the hair um, but you don't want to take the line too far up <clears throat> don't forget the actual line of the clay for his legs are going to stop there so be aware that when you're rolling and smudging you're not becoming too enthusiastic and literally ending up with the hairline right up his stomach talking about hairline up the stomach we're going to need to decide whether there's going to be chest hair on our guy or not and <clears throat> the good thing about it being baked is we can add it and if we don't like it we can just take it off without absolutely ruining everything now I want more clay to come around the back there but before I do I'm gonna just get some of this clay sorry I'm just smudging it in up the side here like that some of this clay from around the leg and start to shape it in now can you see there's a big almost a cave being formed do not seal it at the front push from back and then forwards so that you haven't trapped a load of air 
because trapped air it doesn't expand and explode like with ceramics but what it does do is leave you a whole cavity where there's nothing solid so you've got no structural stability there <coughs> now remember <coughs> where your wire is my throat is terrible at the moment <coughs> sorry guys right it's something that takes practice which visualizing where your wire is and feeling where it is inside the clay it's not easy and it you're gonna get it wrong sometimes if you end up with your wire poking through cover it with a bit of clay and just move in that the join lines of the bit you added but it helps being able to see the other leg so i'm just bringing it down now you've got to watch how the bottom of this goes you don't want it to overlap your hoof too much but you do want it to be level with each other and this we're really working on the shape rather than how much there's fingerprints and all that sort of stuff and do remember that you're gonna be adding the hair so you will end up with <clears throat> the leg being even thicker than what you're doing here it's up to you if you don't want to add individual hairs to it and just keep it as brown clay that you scratch in lines on that's an option too but i want it to go a bit more detailed than that so i'm <clears throat> just going around little bit by little bit and fiddling why is my voice so scratchy <clears throat> all week long absolutely fine come on to stream and my voice like yep you need me now <laughs> so i'm just um fiddling around and pinching and moving it to where i want the clay basically and that takes a little bit of time but just keep at it you will get to <clears throat> a point where you're happy with it but if you try to stay on one bit for ages you'll find that um you end up having to come back to it because once you started to shape another bit then the bit that you've just been working on don't look right so you just keep going round and round and round now I've got that leg shape roughly where I want it like that what do you reckon really yeah but we need to get a bum on it but what I'm gonna do is the two legs like that and then join the whole thing on yeah. so I'm aware that he's got no back section <clears throat> But we're going to repeat the other leg. So again, push the clay kind of flat so you've got something to wrap around. Like so. And I tend to try and start towards the top and then squeeze the clay down because it's far easier than starting from the bottom and going up. You tend to be fighting gravity then, which is always harder so again wrapping it round and I'm trying to take care to trap as little air as I can like so right if you try and move the clay down the leg at this point can you see there's no stability to it it wants to just slide around this is why we are making sure it's joining on how we want before we 
do anything about shaping anything. Right, I need some more clay up by the hips. If you found that your clay's laid, you got too much to lower down, <coughs> squeeze from the bottom and just push it up where you want it. See? So as much as you can push it down, you can push it up. Whoop. Let's come round like this. I'm just attaching that bottom because I can feel it wobbling around and I don't want to crack it all up. And I'm using the fact that I'm on a hard table as another direction of force. <clears throat> So sometimes when you're holding and you're pushing, the thing wants to move so you can anchor it on the table a lot easier. I know it's harder for you to see, but I will lift it up, I promise. So I'm going up like this. I'm making sure I've got those nice big round legs. This one's going to be easier to smooth in because it hasn't got that arm in the way just going around and pushing it on like that now if you think you've got air trapped anywhere stab it with your needle pin push the air out and then smooth it back in again I'm sorry if you're experiencing stuttering, it seems that our internet's gone red. It should be back now. Is it back now? Yeah. Sorry guys, internet doing its thing of stuttering all over the place. Right, don't forget where your wire is. And you can feel it when you get near to it. Uh, let's keep looking at the other leg. Whoops, sorry, I'm just picking it up. So we've got a knee. <coughs> <coughs> it's not even COVID. I've been nowhere. Got a knee in here. Like that. Then it goes back. And then down. There. So just fiddling around getting the shape that you want the other thing you can do is you can come in with your tools and really accentuate the behind the knee line like that especially if you're not putting hair on but I will be so that will just vanish which is the only reason I'm not really bothering with that level of accuracy but yeah and don't forget the sides of your tools make really good tools in of themselves they make these little tiny rolling pins you can get right into a crease and define the bend if you see now I want to point that knee a lot more like that that looks more like it what do you reckon now I need to come around the front underneath and then build up a backside for it yeah that's the next stage so let's get some more clay I think I'm going to do the front and underneath first. So you've got to think about the shape. Stand upright. Sorry, I'm just pushing him upright. He keeps trying to lean back. And that's what happens when you change the lay of your underside. So if you end up with cracks because you just moved 
the standing position just smooth them back in make sure that any gaps have got clay in it you might even need to stab because it could cause an air bubble so yeah it's annoying but I will be able to fix it up when I put on his backside anyway so we're going for a slightly V'd front and then a strip going through the legs so that's the kind of shape I'm like that and I'm again I'm gonna take it pretty thin I don't know why our internet's going crazy. It's really annoying. I apologise, people. So what I'm producing is that. I'm not so worried about that end because I'm probably going to trim it off. Now, do check your thickness against the rest of what you've made. And I think this is still a bit too thick. <coughs> So what I'm going to do is this, put it down, rolling pin it, then I can trim it and release it, that's another option, so get your blade, trim it down to the thickness that you want, like so, I reckon that's going to be far too high let's do that and then see what the placement is if I try and lift this up because it's kind of thick you probably can do it but you're much better off getting your blade and running it to release it's gone frame rate has dropped again the so frame rate dropped again sorry the connection has completely um, it's recovering a bit now but it's <coughs> is can you guys tell me when you can hear me because we're being told that our frame rate is completely fallen it's anyone there it seems, to, it seems to come back on twitch oh, it's gone out again is it gone out what on earth is going on with our internet I'm really sorry, I th it looks like our internet's going crazy. There's nothing I can do on my computer because it's... Just Anyone able to see? I take it not. Uh, it's still red. I don't know. <sighs> Back a bit, can you tell me if you can see me, people on Twitch, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Facebook any of you guys? You can hear us fine. Okay. I guess we continue going so we'll continue going, going then and hope that it doesn't fall over completely. So I've done like a little nappy. triangle nappy type of thing Pretty going on. So what I'm doing, making sure I'm not covering that finger, take it down to the line that you want, which will probably be there, push it into place and bring it up between the legs. I think that might be a little bit too wide, but fiddle, 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 and it doesn't matter because we're going to smooth it all in anyway. But that looks more like it the big thing you've got to do is just make sure you're not trapping air so like that now we're gonna smooth those joints in I could see and hear you but my message wasn't getting oh. through 
Right. So that's just my mother-in-law saying that she can see and hear us so I can carry on. Right. So we the now got that kind of look. Now, you, because we're going to add hair over it, we don't have to smooth it in that well. But what I do want to do is make sure that I've got the shape that I want and that I haven't got any trapped air. So it's worth having a quick smudge about just so that you can feel the state of the clay. Brilliant, thank you. It freaks me out because our computer's got a red gr and green light system and when you see that red light it's meant to mean that everything's completely fallen over and no one can see anything except the amount of times it's red lighted and people That's say they can see us so it's like right. Ugh. right so we're like that now which looks more like what i'm aiming for we just got to do this back end now that looks like a right kind of amount clay but what we're going to do is bring it to more of the shape that we want without any of the crack in there yet so like that and then we can add that into place then smooth that in does that look like too much back end yes yeah that's only about half that half that okay I want it kind of big but not massive so let's round that back up like that and then you're going for kind of oval that kind of shape yeah then we can put that in place like so make sure that it's pushed on firmly and that you i'm going to work on this armature next time i do a person you'll see this spine will not be wobbling around like this i think this will do okay once i got it baked but it is pretty annoying at the moment Oh well, live and learn. That's the thing about these streams. I'm learning alongside of you guys. Just making sure that's pushed in and joint in and getting the kind of shape that I want. Like that. I can see that that leg is cracking. I know. Yes, the fur really will. Like that. Now, I then I'm going to come in and start to divide a butt crack. And you need really a thicker pin tool to come in and start to do that. And don't forget, it goes all the way through. And we are going to have hair over it so it won't be so pronounced if you're just going to use this as your top hair the clay that you're sculpting now then you're going to have to work on making this look far more realistic what i like to use when shaping a behind is my ball tools little metal sticks with various size balls at the end so you can actually come in and widen up any split or shrink down any split it's they're very versatile all right now what you're gonna do is start to pinch each cheek so that 
they are their own little bump so you're defining them out as two butt cheeks rather than that single ball that you had yeah like so and it depends on what you're sculpting there are many different shapes of butts and they're all right so yeah it's very personal on what you're trying to sculpt i'm going to come in and do far more of a divide there i think because i want it to be visible for all that hair like that <coughs> now i like this little triangle tool because what you can do is just smudge it along the top there to just start to produce that little triangle of the is it your sacrum your tailbone there's a little triangle at the base of the spine coccyx something like that my anatomy is not great but that sort of shape see so we're at that i think so long as you made sure that these joins are fully joined you don't really need to smooth them in. The problem comes if you want if you don't push them in enough that they become weak points and fracture lines. You want to make it so that if you drop your model, your model survives it. So before I go around adding hair, I'm just gonna have a quick flip around and a quick look at it make sure that the form is exactly what i want and that they're uniform to each other and my best bit of advice for that actually is to ask someone else so jamie does that look right to you yeah he's still got quite a big booty yeah but he would do. He's running around all the time. Deers tend to have quite a pronounced... Deers and goats and all that. They have quite a pronounced um, top of the leg. Yep. So I think we're now ready to put hair on it. Except for one thing. Are you going to smooth the butt in before you put hair on it? Nope. Because okay. it's all going to be covered in. So long as it's not a stress fracture. So it's pushed in enough. You're good. What we're going to do is add a little towel so that when we put the hair on it can lay over it. So I reckon that's a good towel mount. Let's put it on its front so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do, form it into a ball, then take one side, twist and pinch until you got that sort of shape. And I'm just starting to slightly tilt that tip up like that. Okay. And they tend to have a pinched line along there. Let's, where's my plastic goat so I can show you? See, it's thinner. It's like a pinched bone line and the hair comes off it. So pinch the top line like that then I'm putting that like that and smoothing that join in and making sure it's attached properly and I'm not smoothing it so that it vanishes the join line because which I would do if this was the finished thing I'm just making sure it's joined on very well and isn't going to fall off at a later date right there we go now I've got a towel on okay so we can start adding these hairs 
Now what you're going to do is you're going to start from the bottom and layer them up. And again, I'm going to start on the inside, overlap that bottom line a little bit, but not enough that it's going to make the hoof disappear. I mean, some goats do have longer hair. But I think it will be a better look if you don't totally cover up your hoof. So I'm going to put a few of these on and then I'll show you what I've done. So going round in a circle and I'm just alternating between twisted ones and zigzaggy ones. So that it looks kind of like a random pattern and again you can literally random it rather than going alternate right once I've gone round in a line I'll hold it up and give you a quick look now I am definitely seeing a lot of the backing clay color showing through so you really really do want to make sure it's something that at least contrasts well with the hair color don't just use your mixed scrap clay you're going to end up with a rainbow legged animal right focus in So you can see that's the first line on, yeah? Now the next line, we're gonna go just slightly overlapping the first, only by a little bit. You don't want a large overlap because if you do, the hair becomes a lot thicker and your leg will then get thicker which again if you're doing something like a um, highland cow that works out pretty well you can really layer it up just get pinches and add it but on something like this where i want to keep some of these defined shapes on the leg then just come in and just overlap slightly do remember that your legs gonna bend forward at some point so you may need a ball tool just to come in and slightly tap that hair into that shape you don't want to tap it too hard because you don't want to smudge the ridges on it uh, I find putting hair and scales on things it, I find it very relaxing you haven't got to actually be able to clearly think very well if you've got a tired day your brain's a bit foggy this is a good relaxing job to do also stick on something on youtube like a story to listen to because you haven't got to be focused can you see that's the next layer on like so and we're going to work our way up now what we're going to do is we're going to stop at the top of the leg there then come over do this leg and bring that up to there so then we can start working in lines around the whole thing if you take one leg and bring it all the way up you can bring it up and to the tail divide but I find it easier just to do the top all as one
if you want you can pick up your little shapes with a bottle but I find my finger actually is an easier tool to use to precision place like so and unfortunately you will be at this for quite a while adding little hairs all over this thing but it does come along and it is a really relaxing job but yeah kids complain about having to do lines at school when they're bad try st sticking on thousands of scales onto a dragon or for that matter shaping a thousand scales for a dragon even doing this tray it was pretty tedious over, it took me over several days to do and what was worse was I did such a rookie mistake. I made them all, but twice the size they are currently at. And it wouldn't have looked right. The whole thing would have just been two larger hair shapes. You would have fit about three or four on each leg. And it wouldn't have looked at all right. So I had to scrunch them all up and start again. I did consider just keeping them all and making a Highland cow like separately. But I really wanted to use this clay for this project. Now, just getting my shape in right and making sure they're all stuck down properly. But look so far, it really has started to come up that leg pretty well. So it isn't that slow, not compared to some jobs, I suppose. <clears throat> right, I have actually been doing my Christmas shopping this week. I know some people leave it till absolutely last moment, but for me, where I've got health problems, I've had it in a previous year where I left it till the last moment and then I was sick so nobody got anything sorted until after Christmas which is just not what I want to do also I can then save throughout the year and get individual presents a little bit at a time but what has surprised me is it's almost impossible to get a child's present for £10 anymore. It's really un not good. So I then have to do a really far larger budget than what my finances are entirely happy with. But yeah, right. I've gone round there and can you see I've still kept the shape of that leg in even though does it show up there that's a better angle you see and you can come in and just gently squidge that join in sorry that bend in a little more pronounced like that yeah Difficult bit will be coming through this joint and I'll join I keep saying that this bend at the back of the leg and I'll just show you how to do that What you're gonna do is take the hair and bring it up to the tip of that fold over That I really am gonna need a ball tool for and push into that crease and then the next hair you can bring down the top bit I warn you though when you're picking up little bits make sure you've got the right size ball tool if you try and do it with too small a ball you're gonna just smudge what you're trying to pick up you gently tap on it and it picks up when you want to release it place it in place and then twist the ball twist to the side and it releases the clay 
Does that make sense? So you're picking it up, you're pushing it onto the ball. That happens sometimes. Like that. I do, I do like to say the works usually have a range of craft kits for uh, ten pounds or two for fifteen pounds. Yeah, but mine. I've got nephews from about what is it three to nine. Yeah. So it's. Bit, yeah. yeah, and the nine-year-old does exactly what I did when I was a little kid and goes and watches all these adverts on the kids' TV for toys that are absolute fortune I mean one of the ones he wants I think is up in the 80 quid mark mum can get him that right can you see how I've gone up to that crease line there now I'll show you me going the other way down the leg so that it still shows up you're not trying to fold a hair in half to go through it Whoop. pick up see I find it easier to pick them up on my fingers if I can those little um, fingerprints are actually a really helpful tool so there you go that's the first hair put in place can you see it's just coming down to that line but it's mostly up above it now in there I'm definitely going to need to use this little little cracks but fortunately ball tool sets are actually really cheap online I think I got this set for it was either five pounds or around that kind of mark but I got I got it five years ago and that's the thing, I know there are many different types of tools you can use on polymer clay. So you can get plastic, wood or metal. <clears throat> metal, it lasts the longest, it's the easiest to work with your clay. I just really prefer metal tools. I mean the handles obviously don't need to be metal, but what you're actually working on the clay with I find out of all the options it is the one that gives you the best results and don't break so easily the breakages I found on my metal tools are in the handles rather than in the actual tool itself so yeah I'm almost over that nasty little bend there and I've still kept it see what I mean you can just butt up against it either side with the hairs right let's try and get quicker with the rest of this because this is go taking a while the bend in the front it's far easier to manage than the one in the back so you just literally fold your way over it but don't forget the hairline goes up the leg there and then that way so you need to put a bend in that hair you don't want the shape of it to not actually be flowing right so I'm sort of going diagonal like that and then bending over where the knee is see so hair that way flick it down <clears throat> and that is the easiest way to get it looking natural along the sides Whoop. there we are yeah so this for the next forever <clears throat> do you want to see me carrying on or do you want me to do the rest of this off of stream? I am happy either way. Finish that one leg and then... Shall I finish this one leg as far as I can? Let 
that. The other thing I would have to say is about how you end it at the top, really. And what you do for the undersides. So I think I'd better go on and just do one leg. Because these are, I wouldn't say they're sticking points, but they're not immediately obvious how to make that look right. Interesting bit of information I read in an article today. Turns out those people who go on very romantic whale watching boat trips yeah whales can fart i didn't think about it but they do so that must um that must be nice they tend to do it when they surface so yeah i'll leave you with that as a nice image talking of back parts of animals here we are now i'm trying to make sure that it is all pushed down and there isn't any of the bits sticking up too much that sounds good I wonder if you just go into the, um... finishing the leg or the whale fart yeah i'm thinking it finishing the leg somehow um yeah I'm almost there actually on one leg. I've just got to come in and do the front section. Then I will be caught up. Right. When you've got like an underside like that, if you don't want to leave it with just hair hanging down and a gap, what I tend to do is layer up some hair on that side on the underside and then drape the bit over the top i'll show you what i mean sorry i'm trying to get this leg done quickly but if i do it without getting to the right stage it's going to be a pig of a job here we go so something i read about how the god pan got his pan pipes apparently he was really interested in a wood nymph she was completely not interested in him thank you and he pursued her and pursued her and she was like nope I'm not interested i'm not into goat boys and so here's where the story diverges some myths say he asked the gods do something to make her stay with me and some put it as she asked her family for a way of making it so that he can't get her either way the solution was to turn her into um, reeds you know the reed plant that grows around ponds so the only thing that was left of her was her song which is the sound of wind blowing through the reeds so instead of going okay well this is all I've got so I'm going to treasure this and make sure it grows nice and healthy nope he cuts it down and turns it into a pipe so yeah he was going to be a real keeper even if she did accept him that is kind of brutal so either way i'm not sure how turning her into reeds would be answering that he can keep her forever except i suppose he could grow him around his house or something and the whole my family did it to keep me away from him is also like 
that's really rubbish I'm sure there was a better method but there we are that's the myth he has turned he has got his missus turned into a set of pipes now technically I'm not making pan but it is one of his kindred a thorn so what I was thinking when I finish oh my god those motorbikes sound like hair dryers. Um, what I was thinking is using acrylic paint. See if I can paint on his arm a tattoo of a set of pipes. Okay, Hedgehog says, love your storytelling. Thank you. Greek mythology. Well, most ancient mythology is really weird. I mean... I think the one that has been the weirdest thing I've ever read is the Dogon tribe believe that there is a race of creatures that are godlike. I missed who that was. Pan? Pan. Yep. Um, a race of creatures that helped teach them everything and were godlike. And what they did, when they felt they were getting close to death, they would be become pregnant. And at the point of giving birth, they put their consciousness into the child's body and gave birth to themselves. Which, I'm like, that is a really weird thing to come up with. Right, we're now on that underside. So, how am I going to do this with the camera? Like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay some of these shapes on the underside like that in a line. And then I'll be overlapping on both sides of it but it just keeps you from having a patch that isn't patterned so I'll show you in a second right here you go can we see under that base what I've done there yeah what about from the front so you still got that line of swirly bits of clay on the underside and then when we come around and drape the front bit it will hide up the ends and technically the only time anyone's going to see that anyway is if they turn the model upside down but they might and you don't want to be having any flaws that are that easy to avoid if that makes sense so now I'm just coming in and I'm making sure that I make the hair lay downwards instead of sideways. So you're starting to curve it round on that underside there. Okay. So let's come in like that. So you see once the next hair is in place it makes that look a lot less weird and cruddy well it turns out doing an entire tray of these was definitely the right thing to do i thought there's going to be a lot of these little swirls and i'm doing work that i'm actually just not going to use i'm pretty sure i'm going to use up all of these i could never get over zeus appearing as animals and that worked on the ladies i know there are in stories and in films some of the choices that they have their both males and females making as their love interest you're like never in real life would anyone be interested in that person thing whatever it's not a thing so yeah i suppose if it's all coming out the brain of someone all you've got is to have that person write them like it and and that's the depiction i suppose because i yeah but i think in reality 
even back in ancient Greece when they read that like you think Greek women did what now with a what who <laughs> yeah no no they didn't but you know stories are in the hands of the authors you ain't gotta like it I mean it it um yeah well, it's an interesting point because history it depends on which bits of texts are found and it doesn't have to be um anything anyone agrees with i heard the dead sea scrolls which are really taken as something that really depicts what egypt thought at the time yeah not so much it was like a if it was a group nowadays they would have been very much seen like the waco texas group so they found references to the religious sect that wrote it and everyone was like these guys are kind of mad and they made a little enclosure where only their own people can come and live and some of the ideas they were seen as way out there but for ages we thought that's what everyone thought because that's what we found so i wonder if what kind of literature are those in the future going to find at this age because pretty much everything that's on computers it's unlikely they're going to have any working computers so i hope it's not teeny magazines can you imagine if they thought it was all like just 17 and take a break they would be like these people they couldn't organize their lives even basically no at least at least let it be national geographic or something like that maybe we should leave a note any of these titles do not speak for our society disregard them right can you see i'm getting to that join line at the back side so what i'm gonna do is i'm starting the hairs just at the line of that crack lucky we're not monetized all this talk of us this video wouldn't be one that they're going to be happy to right like that so let's see if i can show you the underside hmm can you see how's it looking so you can see it actually ties in well once you put those two in a line underneath so I've just got to come up and do around the side there like so Whoop. and the good thing is where I have been rushing I've not been going and doing alternates between spirals and zigzags so there are some of each that are together it's very randomly placed which is um what it would be with curly hair there are goats with straight hair so you can either make straight hairs but i really like the curly look i think it is more goatish to me if that's a thing now <clears throat> before i count any of this is done i'm going to make sure i go around and just gently squeeze it all into place that there's nothing that is loose and going to fall off so I'm just coming around gently tapping it you don't want to be hard with this because you don't want to get rid of all that nice texture and design that you've spent ages but the last thing you want to do is once it's baked it falls off because it is really hard to glue it all back on really really is 
Now obviously when I go along that side I'm going to angle them out in that direction. There we go. Like that. Yeah. So it's a lot of the same. But it, as you can see, it does come along quickly. And I've also found that if you put a few of them where it's not the thin point at the bottom it doesn't notice you haven't got to freak out and worry about it so much Yvette Martin says I see but uh, buttocks yeah that's the idea and in that little crack I'm just going to come in and push those ends Very buttocks at that. like that yep yeah. absolutely because it's a goat man and that's what would happen you would have goatish look to you so again pushing it in with the tools into the little gaps if you let it lay on the surface it's gonna just vanish out your details and not stick properly and neither of those things are good so it's worth taking the time just to come in and push them on properly. Bet's it. You said crack. Smiley face. Yeah, yeah, I have been. Right, we need to start to curve it so that it starts to go upwards. Like so. Now, before we come in and do that top bit there, we're going to do around the towel. And that is almost working in the opposite direction. So instead of layering up, going upwards, we're going to layer up around from the base of the towel. So there's no gap of hair. Does that make any sense, what I just said? Like this. So... We're going in from the base of the towel first and making sure it's all pushed on and then coming up and doing the tip and then going back in and carrying on with the backs of the legs. <clears throat> now, this one's going to be a fiddly one to get into but persevere with your tools. If you've got kids with tiny little hands, get them to do the fiddly bits. Says, uh, sorry, my maturity level is all time low this evening. Yes, it is. <laughs> <clears throat> no judgments here. I have not marked these streams as for children. I've marked them as for adults. So, make sure you're not knocking off any of your little curls that you've already put on because it's really annoying when you do that you catch your finger on it and it all falls off so that's let's try and make it work with gravity and hold it on its side like that rather than make it fight it come in push it in there we go that's better <coughs> So we're just coming in to close up that last bit on the towel and even though we're doing half of it and then coming up round and doing the other half I would advise you do the towel all at once because it will be very hard to do half and then come back round. So push that in push that up like that I'm just getting a bit of shape back into there like that now we've just got to come in and do a few on the, the tip of that towel yeah so like this and you just overlap the top of that and try and bring them so that the ends meet at that point like so 
one more in there tiny little one because I don't need a lot of clay to cover that there we are right see that's the oops let's see give you a decent background you can see the tails all covered whoop there we are like that so now we can come in and do around the base of that and you just tuck it into the gap like you did at the base of the towel to take it up the sides can you see you're just coming in and you're tucking it in down there but we've got to try and bring these hairs more upright like that so you're now trying to face your hairs top to bottom in line with the back rather than slant, slanting up sideways which does mean a bit more thinking about your placement but it really once you get it started it comes together quite easily so can you see that hair there is curved round and up no, sorry like this that hair there whoops there it curves it's almost the shape of my finger Fair Hedgehog says Ruffle at Evie hmm? Fair Hedgehog says Ruffle at Evie oh uh, yeah almost at the top so then I can show you how I finish it and there's two ways you can do this either you can leave it so that it's just the little points that you've already made that finish that top line or you can come in and feather the top which I'll show you how to do that because that's what I want to do but I'm coming in and I'm making sure that they sit along that top line of where I want it and not overlap the skin where it would then take the legs too far up that makes sense so you're coming in and making sure that your twists instead of lining up with the row underneath they're lining up on the top line more just a little bit of a gap there right I'm almost there to be able to have enough to actually show you just give me two more minutes I should have looked up more stories really but yeah the amount of times I've dropped hairs and they've gone missing in the past they end up getting trapped down by hooves and under the model so do try and make sure that when you're picking up the hairs you're picking them up securely because each hair you've spent time working on it and it's clay that you paid for I know it's just a little bit but the amount of little bits you lose over the year can all add up so do take the time to be careful now I'm getting around the front I can be a lot faster can you see I'm just adding in making sure I get that line like so that's gonna so up and down instead of going diagonal it is such a It takes a while to get used to bending fur in the right direction so what I said I advise is get a photo of the animal that you're trying to sculpt so that you can start to see fur direction because it is one of the things that our eyes pick up on is if hairs are not laying the correct way there are certain mistakes you can make in clay 
that kind of vanish and people just never notice but some of them like getting your eyes slightly out of alignment if they're not on a complete horizontal and you've diagonal diagonaled them a bit everyone spots it everyone it's really annoying and your hair direction is one of those ones that everyone will spot it if you really get it too wrong I think if I put down another three or four I'll be able to show you how to do that feathering in here we go right one leg it's all on push it on make sure everything's fully attached and push down nicely like so so what do you think so far definitely looks like a hairy goat leg thankful you are not creating that star yes distracted enough by the man titties and buttocks <laughs> satyrs are very much the x-rated cousins of fawns in the greek myth and I had to avoid that. What we're going to do, I'll show you it on a big bit of clay first. We're going to come along that top line and we're just putting in little lines like that. You see? And what we're going to do is we're going to do that along that joining edge at the very tip of the hair. So you've got to make sure that they're joined on properly and it helps you do that using your pin tool you're just pushing it down and just slightly feathering it and what that is is if you look on your head hair there are little baby hairs they call them tiny little hairs that are along the hair lines that just sit on the edge and it just looks more natural when you put them in I will hold it up and show you it's almost not noticeable and I can imagine right can you you're gonna need to real focus can you see the tiny feathering maybe I need a torch you got a torch anyway it's a bit of a blue torch so sorry about that can you see the feathering really not really not it's not showing up on camera it's too small it's too small dang okay uh let's go this way up that might show it just about it's about just along here so you're coming in and you're almost not even a millimeter tiny little fluff lines just along that join and it makes it look more natural you can control the line that it lays on far more if you come in and do this so that you've got a far smoother crisper V shape and it makes sure that everything is stuck and attached to the baked clay properly so I've done it a bit more up the front there can you focus sorry is that better to go closer yeah so that's what we're going to do fluff it in like that now off camera I will do the other side and I will get it baked and next week we can do things we can talk about doing the head um, 
something else I may end up doing is chest hair if I do I'll do a little patch to show you what I'm gonna do take a small bit of the brown you're gonna really make it very thin very 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 thin celebration of fertility held partly in his honour each February in Rome, well into the common era, he used to close his goats and ran through the streets wielding strips of goat skin. Interesting. Cool. So we're going to smooth it into the chest like that and then come in and stipple the heck out of it. The chest hair. You can also come in and do a little bit of a swirly motion although it doesn't show up as much as like curly hair it more just looks like a mess Evie says uh, and Art Hard Life says there was a lot more variety in those hairs than I expected it looks quite abstract yeah it, it really does it's mainly because your hands aren't able to make carbon copies of them you just end up that's sort of swirly enough that's sort of wavy enough it'll do kind of thing so they are very individual so can you see i'm making sure that it's stuck on properly and firmly very thin layer and you're just coming in and doing a little bit of a swirl in it and that looks more like chest hair you can paint it on but it's um it looks painted on it really does but the more you attack this so long as it's stuck down properly the more you will find it looks right because there are gaps between the hairs there you do get to see a bit of skin it's not one big old rug but the difficulty is is to get it to actually stay stuck when you're attacking it this much may be easier to do onto raw clay but the thing by adding it onto the chest before you've baked it is that you're if you don't like it you can't really remove it whereas this you just literally wipe it off but yeah if you look at that zoomed in close Can you see it looks a bit more like thick chest hair and what I'll do is I will carry that on like that into a V shape and do a line down his stomach of it okay so we'll be back next week after this is all baked for me to do the bit that I worry the most about with all this which is always the head because faces are not easy but if I mess it up I mess it up with you all live on stream as always so you can see that we all make mistakes and everyone gets things going wrong sometimes so I hope you all have a really good week I'm gonna go now so do like and follow and things like that and I will see you next Wednesday with the fawn's head. Okay? So, see you later.